and the sharing. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. Okay, so today we're going to review for the Chapter 8 test. I have quite a few questions that people have emailed in, so I'm going to start with those. And you should be able to see WebAssign on the uh, left side of your screen. Can you see that? Yep. Excellent. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. This is from section 8.5, number 14. It says, solve the equation into your answers as a comma separated list. And even though the answers here on the left side and web assign are right, the student still wanted me to go through the process. So we'll do that. So we have nine times the absolute value of two X over seven plus 10 equals zero. So the first thing I'm gonna do is isolate the absolute value. I'm gonna do that by dividing both sides of the equation by nine. On the left side, that gives me the absolute value of two X over seven plus 10. And on the right side, that equals zero. All right, I'm gonna go inside the absolute value bars and I'm gonna simplify that expression down to a single term. So if I've got 2x over 7 plus 10, that's like 2x over 7 plus 10 over 1. My common denominator is going to be a 7. So 2x over 7, nothing changes. But the 10 over 1, I need to multiply by 7 over 7, which gives me 70 over 7. Well, 2x over 7 plus 70 over 7 is 2x plus 70 over 7. So that's going to go in here. So now I have an absolute value set equal to 0, and the expression inside has been simplified. Since it's set equal to 0, I'm just going to have 1 unique equation, because if I set it equal to the opposite of zero, it's going to be the same equation producing the same result. So now it's a matter of solving this equation. To do that, I'm going to start by clearing the fraction. So I'll multiply both sides by the LCD, which is seven. On the left, the sevens reduce out and I get 2x plus 70 equals. On the right, zero times seven is zero. Then I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides. 2x equals negative 70. Divide both sides by 2x equals negative 70 over 2. So x equals negative 35. Any questions about that particular case? Negative. All righty. Let's go through and let's check our work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recopy this entire original problem and then plug that number in. So let's see here. I've got nine times the absolute value of two X over seven plus 10 equals zero. And I'm gonna plug in the possible solution negative 35. So that's gonna look like this, two times negative 35, seven plus 10 equals zero. Well, two times negative 35 would be negative 70. Negative 70 divided by seven would be negative 10. Negative 10 plus 10 would be zero. So basically what I have is nine times the absolute value of zero equals zero. Well, the absolute value of zero is zero. So now I've got nine times zero equals zero and nine times zero is zero. So zero equals zero, bada boom, bada bing. And the solution is correct. All right, let's go on to the next problem, which is number 
15. Number 15, this is still in section 8.5. Solve the equation, enter your answers as a comma separated list. So we have negative seven times the absolute value of six X minus eight plus 19 equals 19. So the first thing we're gonna do is isolate the absolute value. So I'm gonna subtract 19 from both sides of the equation. Oops, that's supposed to be a minus sign. Okay. There. This is gonna cancel and this is gonna, so I'm gonna get that. Then I'm gonna come back and divide both sides by negative seven. So that's gonna reduce down. I'm gonna have the absolute value of six X minus eight equals zero divided by negative seven is zero. So once again, I have an absolute value isolated set equal to zero. So that means I'm only gonna get one unique equation. Solving that, I'm gonna add eight to both sides. Six X equals eight divide by six X equals eight sixths, which reduces down to four thirds. Let's check our work. So we'll put four thirds into the original equation, negative seven times the absolute value of six times four thirds minus eight. All of that plus 19 equals 19. Six over three is two over one. Two times four over one is eight. Eight minus eight is zero. So I've got negative seven times the absolute value of zero plus 19 equals 19. But the absolute value of zero is zero. So negative seven times zero plus 19 equals 19. But negative seven times zero is zero. And zero plus 19 is 19. So it checks. Any questions on that before we go on? Nope. All righty. Now we're gonna take a look at number 21, still in section 8.5. It says solve the equation, enter your answers in a comma separated list. If there's no solution, enter no solution. So we have seven eight equals the absolute value of x over six minus eight x over nine. So the absolute value term has already been isolated, but I'm gonna take that term and simplify it. So x over six minus eight x over nine, the least common denominator of six and nine would be 18. So I'm gonna multiply the first term by three over three to get three x over 18 and multiply the second term by two over two to get 16 X over 18. So now I'm gonna subtract two terms with the same denominator. Three X minus 16 X would be negative 13 X over 18. So that's gonna go inside of here, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides. I just like to have my absolute value on the left. So I'm gonna put it over there. Okay, so I just switched the order around. Just I just like having it over there, simplified inside. I've isolated the absolute value. It was already isolated. So now I'm gonna have two equations, negative 13 X over 18 equals 7 18 or negative 13 X over 18 equals the opposite of 7 18 Well, we wanna isolate X and the coefficient of x is negative 13 18 So we're gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 13 18 which is negative 18 13 So negative 18 13 times negative 13 18 reduces down to one, one times x is x. Okay, 
On the right side, negative 18 over 18 is negative one. Seven times negative one is negative seven, and that's over 13. Then the second equation, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient of x, negative 18 over 13. On the left, that's all gonna reduce down to one times x, which is x. On the right, we're gonna get what? Positive 7 thirteenths. So there's our two answers, negative, thir negative 7 thirteenths and 7 thirteenths. Any questions about that? All right, I'm going to stop the sharing for a minute and go back in and change what's in WebAssign. Let's see here. We're looking at 8.9 now. And number 14. Okay, so let's go back to sharing. And again, can you see the web assign screen? Yep. All righty. Just want to make sure because as you know, one of my videos, I forgot to click the right button. And so I talked about what to do, but you couldn't see it. Oh, well. Okay. So this is section 8.9, number 14. And this is variation. Uh, let's see, I need to make this a little bigger so we can see the whole, whole problem. So let's change that a little bit. There we go. Okay. Under constant temperature, the volume occupied by a gas varies inversely to the pressure applied. Okay. If the gas occupies a volume of 18 cubic inches under a pressure of six pounds per square inch, find the volume when the gas is subjected to a pressure of nine pounds per square inch. All right. So the variation model is gonna be inverse variation because right here it says varies inversely. And what have we got? We've got the volume. So we're gonna let V, uh, V equals volume, uh, and then pressure applied. Let's see, we're gonna let P, nah, P equals pressure applied. Uh, let's see, if the gas occupies the volume, Okay, so under constant temperature, so the temperature isn't gonna change, so we don't need to include that. The volume varies inversely as the pressure applied. So we get V equals K divided by P. Again, K isn't mentioned, but it's there, we've got to include it. All right, so there's our formula. If the gas occupies a volume of 18 cubic inches under a pressure of six pounds. Okay, so that's one scenario. That will allow us to solve for K by multiplying both sides by six, which is what, 60 and 48, so that's 108. Now that's gonna go in here in place of K. So that means the volume equals 108 divided by the pressure applied, okay? Now the follow-up says, find the volume when the pressure, uh, when subjected to a pressure of nine pounds per square inch. So we're gonna take 108 divided by nine and we get 12. And so, and let's see, uh, the volume is in cubic inches. So volume, 12 cubic inches. Okay with that? All right. Next up is number 15. This is still in 
solve the problem by writing a variation model. The costs of a trucking company vary jointly. So there's the type of variation, joint variation, as the number of trucks in service and the number of hours they are used. All right, so cost varies jointly. So how about if we let C equals costs. Uh, number of trucks, how about N equals number of trucks and number of hours used. We've already used N, so how about if H is number of hours? Tell you what, I'm going to change the number of trucks to T. So, so C is cost, T is number of trucks, H is number of hours. All right. The cost of a trunking, uh, trunking of a trucking company, so that's C, varies jointly as the number of trucks in service, so K, T, and the number of hours. So C equals K times T times H. So there's our joint variation. Okay. When three trucks are used for five hours each, the costs are 100 or $1,125. So that means 1125 equals K times three times five. five. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure yesterday when I was reviewing for the Math 93 class, I messed up some stuff by looking at the wrong thing. So I'm trying to take it slower today. We'll see if that does any good. So 1,125, this is dollars, equals three times five or 15K. Divide both sides by 15. So we've got 1,125 divided by 15 is 75, okay? So now, it says, find the costs of using 10 trucks each for 13 hours. So C equals $75 times 10 times 13. And if we take 75 times 10 times 13, we get $9,750 as our total cost. All right, any questions on that one? No, but it, it is kind of funny. You know, I've, uh, I've got a lot on my mind at the moment, so I'm having a hard time focusing, but uh, I, I run a truck stop. So as soon as you mentioned trucks, I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> ah, so I've got your attention again. I just have to find ways to draw you back in. Free chocolate for everyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. That would draw me in. Okay. So let's take a look at number 16. And let's see. This says, solve the problem by writing a variation model. The power in watts lost in a resistor in the form of heat varies directly as the square of the current passing through it. The constant of proportionality, which is the variation constant, is the resistance. What power is lost in a 5 ohm resistor carrying a 3 ampere current? Okay. Yeah, and I think this is the one I messed up on the other day because I didn't pick up on that it says that K is the resistance. Okay. So the power in watts. So we're going to have P equals power in watts in a resistor varies directly as the square of the current. So C is current in amperes, which is where we get amps, the abbreviation passing through it. Okay, the constant of proportionality is the resistance in ohms. I'm going to say K is resistance. Remember, for all you Star Trek fans, that resistance is futile. Okay, resistance, and that's in ohms. 
what power is lost in a five ohm resistor carrying a three amp current. So power varies directly as the square of the current, okay? So that's where I've got my formula. The constant of proportionality is the resistance. So what power is lost in a five ohm resistor, so that's K, carrying a three amp current, that's three squared. So again, the tricky part there is picking up on the fact that the resistance is the constant of proportionality or the variation constant, okay? So now P equals five times nine or 45 and that's 45 watts. As in Colonel Watts's name, you're probably too young to remember that whole thing. It was a thing about saving energy. Good old Colonel Watts's name. Okay, I digress as usual. So number 17 coming up. Solve the problem by writing a variation model. The pressure of a certain amount of gas is directly proportional to the temperature measured in Kelvin on the Kelvin scale and inversely proportional to the volume. So we've got a combo of two different variation models. A sample of gas at a pressure of one atmosphere occupies a volume of one cubic meter at a temperature of 270 degrees Kelvin. When heated, the gas expands to twice its volume, but the pressure remains constant. To what temperature is it heated? Okay. So the pressure of a certain amount of gas, so we're gonna let P equal pressure, okay? It's directly proportional to the temperature. T is gonna be temperature and that's in Kelvin units. And inversely proportional to the volume, V is gonna be the volume. Okay, so P is pressure, T is temperature in Kelvin units, and V is volume. The pressure, so P, is directly proportional to the temperature and inversely proportional to the volume. So there's my formula. All right. Now, a sample of gas at a pressure of one atmosphere occupies a volume of one cubic meter at a temperature of 217 degrees Kelvin. So that's giving me everything except K, all right? I could simplify the right-hand side and just write it as 217 K. I'm gonna divide both sides by 217. So K equals one over 217. Okay, now that's gonna go here. So my formula becomes P equals one over 217 times T all over V. All right, now, uh, let's see here. When heated, the gas expands to twice its volume. So the volume was one, uh, let's see, one cubic meter. So now it's gonna be two cubic meters. Uh, but the pressure remains constant. So the pressure is still uh, one atmosphere. To what temperature is it heated? So basically, we're going to double the volume, but leave everything else the same. What happens to the temperature? Okay. Now, we could take this whole number right there, 1 over 217 all over 2. That whole thing is sort of the coefficient of T. Okay. That's equal to one over 217 divided by two. 
which is equal to one over 217 times the reciprocal, which would be one half, which is one over two, whoops, not two, 434. Yeah. One over 434. Okay. So basically, our equation becomes one equals one over 434 times t. Still with me? Yep. Multiply both sides by 434, and we get T is 434, and that's degrees Kelvin. So basically, by doubling the volume, we also end up doubling the temperature. Okay. So that uh, that's a, a complex equation, right? Is that the complex the, fraction? Complex fraction. Yeah, on the right. Yes. Good. Good. Yep. Complex fraction. Well, when when I saw you right out, I was like, that looks really familiar. Yes, it should be good. This is where my sarcasm kicks in, and I say, "You mean we're actually using something that we learned before?" Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. I've got some more questions. I'm going to stop the sharing, and switch it over to a different person's problems. So let's see here. Oops. Point nine. This is another case where the questions all have the right answers, but they still want me to go over the process on how to get it. And that's fine with me. Let's see here. So here. All right. This is still in section 8.9, number 13. Solve the problem by writing a variation model. The number of days that a given number of bushels of corn will last when feeding cattle varies inversely as the number of animals. All right, so we have a given number of bushels, so that's not gonna change. So let's see, if X bushels will feed 27 cows for nine days, how long will, it, will, feed, will the feed last for nine cows? Okay, so the number of days varies inversely as the number of animals. So I'm going to let D equal number of days and N equal number of animals. The number of days, okay, so the number of days varies inversely as the number of animals, okay? In X bushels is just a given number but it, of, of feed, but it doesn't change. Just like in a, another problem where they had, I can't remember what it was, the temperature or something didn't change, then it, it really isn't involved in the problem. So if X bushels will feed 27 cows in nine days, so nine equals K over 27, okay? Multiply both sides by 27. K equals nine times 27, let's see. Nine times 27 is 243. That's gonna go right there. So D equals 243 over N, okay? How long will the feed last for nine cows? So then we're gonna take 243 divided by nine, and we get 27 days. Okay, with that, I, I uh, used to live on a farm and I did an experiment. Uh, we were running short of hay, so I started supplementing the hay with sawdust. And I, over a period of time, I kept giving them a little less hay and a little more sawdust. And this was working really well. I was, the, the hay was lasting, but then all the cows died. Uh, just kidding. I didn't really do that. <laughs> I haven't told any dumb jokes for at least a week, so I had to throw that in there. All right. And thank you for that courtesy laugh. Okay. 
No, that was pretty good. You know, when when you started saying that, I was like, uh, I'm pretty sure you're admitting to animal abuse on video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I admit nothing. Well, it's a high fiber diet, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Solve the problem by writing a variation model. Number this is number fourteen. Under constant temperature, the volume occupied. So this is going to be very similar to one we did earlier. Uh, just different numbers, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. But we've got lots of time, so we'll do it. Under constant temperature, the volume occupied by a gas varies inversely to the pressure applied. So we've got volume. So V equals volume of gas. Firstly, to the pressure applied, P equals pressure applied. So the volume varies inversely to the pressure applied. If a gas occupies a volume of 22 cubic inches under a pressure of five pounds per square inch, so there's our setup to determine K, multiply both sides by five, K equals 110. So that's gonna go up there. Find the volume when the gas is subjected to a pressure of 11 pounds per square inch. And even I can do that without a calculator, that's gonna be 10. So, 10 cubic inches would be the volume. And we've got one more question that came in by request. So this is number 15. So oh, this is another truck problem. So the cost for the trucking company, costs, we're gonna let that be C. And the number of trucks is gonna be, whoops, so, so number of trucks is going to equal T and number of hours will be H. Cost varies jointly as the number of trucks and the number of hours used, okay? When three trucks are used for seven hours, the cost the costs are $1,575. So $1,575 equals K times three times seven. So $1,575 equals 21K. Divide both sides by 21. Let's see here. $1,575 divided by 21 is 75. So now we've got C equals 75, and that's dollars, uh, times T times H. Uh, what do we got here? Find the cost of using 10 trucks, each for 11 hours. Okay, so I've got 75 times 10 times 11, which is 8,250 dollars. All right, so that's all the questions that people emailed me. While we're here, Russ, do you have any questions? Anything you'd like me to go over? Uh, no, I think I'm all right. All righty. So this is Friday. The test is on Monday. So there will be no Zoom meeting during class time on Monday. I will be back this afternoon at 1.15 for an office hour. And Monday, I'll be there for an office hour. But uh, basically, you've got from now until Monday evening at 11.59 to take your test. Just remember that once you open it up, the time starts. So with that, have a good weekend. And I appreciate your being here so that I'm not all by myself.